Yama Yama, Mitch here. Welcome to Tambo Talk. I hope wherever you are, whatever you have been up to this week, you are feeling good, you are feeling empowered, you are feeling on track. And remember, as always, if things aren't going your way this week, please breathe in. <sighs> breathe out. Let it go. Because guess what? We're here. This is Tambo Talk. I'm Mitch Tambo. And I have got Natalie Rise up tonight. Natalie Rise is one amazing young woman doing incredible things around the world. She is an amazing singer, musician. She is on a mission to spread light around the world, get people to think differently, eat differently, and absorb her amazing, incredible music. Natalie has played some incredible festivals all the way around the world, some of the biggest festivals around the world, to name a few, like the Green Room in Japan, Summer Jam Germany, WOMAD Australia, Reggae Rise USA, Nevada World Music USA, Reggae on the River USA, Reggae Jam Germany, Woodford Folk Festival Australia, and much, much more. And it is going to be an absolute treat right now in this moment with you all tuned in to cross over to Jamaica to have a quick yarn with Natalie. Let's get her in here. Yama Yama, Natty, thanks so much for joining me today. How are you doing all the way over there in Jamaica? I'm great. I'm great. I'm very honored and humbled to be here with you. Yeah, man. Thanks so much. So what's, uh, what's happening with you over there? How are you doing in this current climate? Good, you know. Um, so, Jamaica has been um, doing pretty well in terms of COVID. I mean, there, there are things like curfew in place and it's been in varied states of, um, you know, strictness over the past six months, I want to say. Um, right now, it looks like there's a few more cases coming back, but things are kind of opening up more. Um, so it's cool and, and the creative, um, community are definitely more back on their feet and interacting and sessions and recordings and things like that are starting to happen again now which is really great because um that's a big part of why i'm here awesome i love that now you know you before natalie rise you were in a pretty acclaimed band i would say blue king brown probably i don't know if i'm wrong or right but i would say in australia it have to be the number one reggae band for sure of its time but now you're doing your own thing and some of your clips and songs have had up, what, 7 million, 2 million views, is that right? Yeah, I think, um, yeah, there's, there's some of the songs have reached into the millions, which is really exciting. It's really great. Um, music is, but so is Blue King Brown songs. And you know, when you say Blue King Brown was in Blue King Brown, Blue King Brown, I am in Blue King Brown. Blue King Brown is still a band with works to do and, um, I have been, you know, focusing my energy on the Natalie Rice project for the past few years, but, um, you know, definitely want to bring some energy back to the Blue King Brown project in the, in the coming year and still really feel that that voice, especially in Australia and Australia Pacific is really important. For sure. Um, the work sure. I'm doing in Jamaica is, um, also really important, you know, I've been touring mainly in the US and Europe, um, mainly. And yeah, there's just, you know, it's just that thing of going with the flow and where the energy is and where you're called to. So sometimes I'm called to be, spend some time in the US, some, sometimes I'm called to spend some time in Jamaica and then at least once or more, you know, and then I'm, obviously I'm called to be in Australia as well, so. Um, For sure. Yeah. So, so I mean, so, I mean, you are, you know, the lead singer, Blue King Brown, and then you've got your own project, Natalie Rise. Is there a difference within the purpose of the, the two scopes? Or do they come together and sort of collide in the sense of they share a very similar purpose of what you're trying to put out to the world and the mission and purpose, you know, that you've got and that's driving you and empowering you? I think that whatever I do, will be just a, fully a part of the, the purest expression that I'm feeling at that moment. Whatever it is, wh whatever project it is I'm working sure. in, in or with, even if I'm working with other people and their projects, it's always going to be what I feel is important at the time. So you've been on this journey, this mission for many years now, and you've had so many successes. 
I mean, your um, bio just transcends itself. You've done and played some of the biggest festivals in the world. You've been Summer Jam in Germany, WOMAD Australia, Electric Forest USA. I mean, the list goes on. Green Room Japan. And we're not talking just small festivals here. We're talking some of the biggest festivals on the planet. Um, you know, where did the mission or where did the vision, where did it come from? I mean, you've been going for a while, but where did it start? And where did it come to a place where you've just gone, let's be independent, let's drive it ourselves and let's get it done? I think that everything for me, I mean, music started for me from just growing up with an awesome soundtrack. My mum would listen to reggae music, but she'd also listen to like um, soul music and a very vast, but really always substance full music you know from that era so we listen to bob but also judy moat and um also jimmy cliff and all of these artists were singing you know songs for people you know for the community songs of freedom um and then also artists like louis armstrong and ella fitzgerald so there's a very i grew up with a very big appreciation for these sounds janice joplin even Jimi hendrix mm -hmm. um santana um and all of them have influenced me as a musician and as a human being because music is a frequency and when we hear and feel sound it affects us on a cellular level and depending on how you stay um you might absorb some more of those things if you're ready to you know like i always look think back to when i first started listening to bob marley's music which was as a child and I liked it from then, but then I realized when I was old enough to actually understand what he was saying, like the lyrical content, I was like, wow, I really love this. Like I loved it again <laughs> because yeah, okay. I realized he would sing it. So it was like, there's levels to the thing. And then you might even hear songs that you've loved forever and notice a one line in it that you never realized, oh, that's what he was saying in that line. Yeah. Okay. You know? Yeah. And, you're still getting revelations from, from music that has, and that's why music is so powerful. Um, and for me now, um, definitely being an independent artist was something that just happened because realized that you can't just wait for people to pick you up and carry you and, you know, like run your career for you. I think especially today and especially when we started Blue King Brown, it was like, we're not gonna wait we got stuff to do we got stuff to say we want to do it now let's go boom boom like link up the people find the band you know yeah. connect jam put up your own posters send out your own cds do your own press releases do yeah and that's just the mindset that we have you know and yes. and we still have that today and um, but we're also very open to collaboration because I do believe that collaboration is the foundation of the future in all things. Mm -hmm. So, you know, working with like minds, connecting, strengthening each other. So there's a whole new avenue of, of doing that, that, that we've also started with Rise Nation as like a creative out, output for other artists that yes. we've met, you know, and, and uh, are working with in Jamaica and anywhere in the world where we are. So Sure. Now, you're here, you're on Tambo Talk, you've agreed. So it's only right that for a brief few minutes, we go diving deep. Now in this part of our journey together, I'm gonna fire at you 10 rapid fire questions. And I don't want you to think too much about it. I just want you to let go. Oh. And let Are you ready for this? Ready. All right, here we go. What's your biggest fear? You can't say that because I don't. But mm, honestly, <laughs> yeah. I'm not somebody who deals with fear. I'm gonna. Okay, let me just tell you right away. I'm gonna be an an interesting person for this because I'm not gonna like. I don't think about things on a like surface level. So it's sure. not like you can say what's your biggest fear? And I'm just going to go, there's a fear because really everything that happens happens for a reason. So you can't fear anything. If you live in fear, then you get mashed up, you know, and, and it's a, it's a barrier. So we don't deal with fear. There's no fear. Boom. Out. What made it motivate <laughs> you to work hard? What, what? What motivates you to work hard? People. I love that. Boom. What did you want to be? 
when you were small? What did, I mean, you're, you're deep, you're leveling up, leveling up by the hour, feeding yourself, nourishing yourself all the time. But what did you want to be when you're just young natty at school running around the playground? Well, at that age, just happy, yo. Just happy. Just want to be happy. But I, I did want to be a musician from a young age still. Like, and, and when I picked up the guitar, that was it. I haven't ever been anything else. But cool. yeah, I think, I think all, all kids from a young age, we just want to be happy. We want to feel safe and happy and loved. Yeah. yeah. Now, you're in Jamaica. I don't know if karaoke is a thing, but say it is a thing. It's karaoke night. What's the go-to tune? <laughs> wow! What's the go-to tune in karaoke? Oh my gosh, what would I sing? I feel like I'd sing a Lauren Hill song because okay. I feel like I've seen my friends sing a Lauren Hill or like, yeah, like, or like the Fugees, something like that. Just because fun, 90s hip hop vibes, you know? Yep, yep. <laughs> <laughs> okay, to date, what would you say is your most proudest accomplishment? Um, my most proudest accomplishment would just be keep going. Would just be the would just be the continuous, relentless, non-stop, despite the hurdles, despite the struggle, despite the physical, emotional, and spiritual tiredness, despite all of that, just to keep going like you just have to keep going no matter what you just everything is even even if it, if shit feels like it's gonna fall apart it's like it's not going to you know it's just that it's just a process and it's a journey and to just remember that and keep that in mind and just keep going because yo if you know why you're here and what you come to do then there's nothing can stop you we come to just give love share love positivity, energy, uplift one another and just, you know, literally be one love in action and, um, you know, walk our talk and, and walk and speak into existence, new worlds and new ways of living and loving because we've seen what current world systems have done and we're not down with that. So yeah, just embracing, embracing that and just to keep going, you yeah, know. Well, I feel like we've gone from the most beautiful question I mean, beautiful answer into the most shallowest question. <laughs> what would you rather do? Wash up, vacuum, or clean the bathroom? Oh, uh, I could do. I could do. I could do wash up or vacuum. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't beg for the bathroom to be honest. But you know, I like to sweep. Just a random, you know, I probably would sweep instead of vacuum. Yeah, on my island, I still, you know, we like to sweep. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Okay. So I feel like this is a good question because it's how you interpret it. So would you rather win the lottery or work the perfect job? Well, if you're asking me as me, yes. I already work my favorite job. I already do what I want, which totally. which in this paradigm I guess could be seen as winning the lottery. So yep. I kind of I kind of take both of them. <laughs> oh, I love that. See, it's how you interpret it. <laughs> now, what is what is the craziest thing you've ever done in the name of love? Yo, look at me. I like I'm like a constant ball of creative energy rolling around the planet for love for one love yeah yeah but for like that the purest truest form of love that i've ever been able to glimpse in terms of that place where we all come from that energy that light that you can get to in your deepest meditation you can feel it you can sense it and it's always there you know but you know yeah sometimes you have to slow down and then go yeah you know this and this is why we do it because we love people we love each other we love yes. the potential and we believe in the potential of of hum humans to be able mm. to reconnect with that energy amplify it grow it in themselves and then reproject it out in into the world and that's where real change comes from and that's where we will all return to we come from love and we'll still go back there. So 
yeah, you know, the, and, and living your life like that, I think is, is just, it's a blessing. And I suppose that would be the most epic thing I do for love is life. <laughs> oh, now you've been, you have been around the best part of the world, hands down. So there has to be a story here that you can give us. Now, what is the craziest thing you've ever done? Craziest thing. Now, this oh. is Natalie Rice here on Tambo Talk, being around the world, playing some of the biggest festivals on the planet, currently in Jamaica. All right, all right. There's, so there's I can give you one story. One story is... Um, one thing that sticks out in my mind is when Carlos Santana invited me to, to play guitar on stage with him. Wow. And that was like, that was when Blue King Brown were opening up for him on the arena tour in Australia and New Zealand. And I grew up listening to the guy, I was such a huge fan. We all like, hello, Blue King Brown's music is like, obviously Santana is a huge influence for us. Um, and um, we were just so happy to be on that tour and the first, um, the first night that we performed, um, he came and sat beside of stage and watched us and um, we were just so excited by that, that he was such a cool guy that he would come and, you know, like give us some energy and time. Wow. And then, um, yeah, then one night he saw me watching and, and signaled for me to come up and play the guitar. And I was like, oh my God, okay, I'll come up. I was so nervous, okay, I was so nervous. We were like 6,000 to 10,000 people in an arena. Wow. And I get up there and, and he's jamming and then um, I look around and I was like, yo, I can just play the drums and I can just jam on the drums. <laughs> and he's like, no, no, he takes off his guitar, um, the percussion I mean, he takes off his guitar and hands me his guitar and he goes, yeah, play. And I was like, Okay, cool, totally got this. All right, wow. put on put, put on his guitar and um, sat down on a on the amp on the stage. At this point, the whole like it's like spotlights on me. Everything is quiet. I'm holding the guitar. I think the people can just see how nervous I am. I look over at the keyboard player, who is a legend. I'm like, what key? I'm like, what key? What key are we in? Keep in mind, I've just been studying jazz on guitar for two years I could tell you where every single note on the fretboard was in a yeah. second like it was my I was there and he goes C sharp I'm like C sharp okay and I look at my fretboard and I just see nothing like no notes <laughs> I'm just like I'm like shit it's somewhere here like it's, it's gonna be it's about here oh and I God. start playing I start playing these riffs and Carlos Santana comes up to me and says, just, he, he noticed I was doing a shape. He says, just move it up a little bit. I was playing a semitone out, which is the most dissonant sound you can oh, get. So yeah. I was doing this thing and he goes, he goes just a little bit further. And he was so genuine and so nurturing in that moment. And I went, oh, and then I found the key. And then I just like, did some riffs and the whole audience was like <gasps> and then they're like yeah <laughs> <laughs> wow that, that is intense it was so classic yo and like the, those those moments where that all happened felt like about an hour but it was really just a few moments you know yeah, and yes. um, and then you know and then we sat and we jammed together a bit and it was just a vibe so um you know that I, I, I what I really took from that was a lot, but mm. also that mm. even someone like Carla Santana, he's so humble. He's mm. so he's so genuinely just a really amazing, beautiful, beautiful musician and person. And yeah. he is really about sharing. And there were multiple times on that tour after that moment where he would come and get me and we'd do some jamming in his green room and he would invite me on stage again. And he just yeah. took a little bit of time to just he saw that I was an upcoming, you know, musician and guitarist and singer. And he, he, he heard that we were singing music for the people and he just gave some energy to that. And I just thought, yo, you know, that's what you want. You know, you don't want to change. You don't want to, you want to stay so in tune with, with yourself mm -hmm. that, um, 
even on the biggest, most successful people can still be, you know, the most beautiful people. So he's a very inspiring individual for me. Totally. What a story. That's, it's beautiful though, just to hear, you know, just how humble and grounded he was in that moment, you know, to even offer you the platform and then even just be so genuine in that moment on stage. Yeah. It's incredible, isn't it? And you find that though here and there with, you know, some of the most accomplished, you know, people that we look up to so much, they're, they're so grounded and can be so loving and just normal, you know, which is such a, such a beautiful experience to actually encounter, encounter that. Mm-hmm. So last question, I think with you, it's a given, but who knows, because we are in 2020 and this world is going in a certain direction to a degree. What would you trade? Intelligence for looks or looks for intelligence? (laughs) (laughs) What kind of of questions you have here, Mitch? Where where do these come from? No, sir. No, listen. You you have to just build, you know? Like each Mm -hmm. and every one of us just will have... We have, a, we have a responsibility and a very yes. interesting opportunity right now with mm. everything that's going on to really go inside. And, and I think more than ever, the inner work that we do is having almost like an amplified and expedited effect than the inner work we would have been doing any other day of the year because yeah. of the nature of what's happening around the world. So this is, is a crazy time, yes, but it's also a very potent time. Mm. And those of us who take that those moments to really reflect on the inside will come out the other end of it that much stronger that much more prepared and you know armored and ready for whatever the future is that we're manifesting and yes. remember that you have the power to do that that you can in this time when you are able to spend time with self you can manifest your destiny and you know you know that start putting into play goals and actions and and yeah like life is changing for sure but it's changing you know if if, if, depending on how you do your work on the inside you can change it for the better and i just trust and know that yourself and my sister and leah and all of the family all of the mom there in australia and beyond are just you know we're all going through some things in our lives right now but all of it has to be because we're transitioning. It's uncomfortable mm-hmm. transition. Growth is not always comfortable and we just keep giving each other strength and support on the mission forward through it. And um, yeah, man, just stay mindful, open-minded and open-hearted. And that's the best answer you're gonna get out of me for a question like that. <laughs> <laughs> I love how you just flipped it and just did what you wanted with it. That's what yeah. it's all about. We're here, we're in the moment. It's great, I love it. But you know what, Natty? I've got to say, one of the songs of yours that I absolutely love is Fear and Dread. It's got such a vibe. The whole song to me is just, it's a vibe. I love it. But what is it about? What's it written about? What kind of space were you in when you wrote that track? So Fear and Dread is really about not getting lost in your mind. Like I was kind of just saying, actually. Um, And that song came together across... It was one of those songs that came on tour and we were just jamming it between sound checks. And by the end of the tour, we had the song. We went straight into the studio. I think we were in Las Vegas. We went straight into the studio at the end of the tour, which ended somewhere not too far from Vegas. And um, cause we had a friend who has a studio there and we recorded at the same time. And it really definitely has a, has an energy about it. It's um, it really is about not getting lost. So, don't get lost out there in a world of fear and dread. Yeah, don't get pulled in and swayed by the woes inside your head. In your heart, mm-hmm. there's a light that will light the way. So it really just speaks about that. You know, it just speaks about remembering that. I know that it seems like at times walking, living, working in this system, in this reality can just be so dreadful. You know, it's like it's just you can get lost in your thoughts, you can get, and you can want to escape by doing a number of things. But the, the, the core factor is to just always remember that, you know, everything we go through is part of the journey and to process it and learn the lessons and then keep going and keep growing. And don't get too 
caught up in everything, just forward. I love that. I feel like it's a very timely track for what we're all encountering right now, especially here in Melbourne. I mean, stage four lockdown at this present point in time. And I actually didn't think the song was so much about getting caught up in your thoughts. And right now, you know, where we find ourselves navigating through, you know, lockdowns and all these kind of sorts of confinements and restrictions that have been put in place. Um, I think it's easy to get lost in negative thoughts and inside your mind, you know? So it's a great reminder to, Hey, don't go down that road because there is hope. You know, you can choose the path of love. And sometimes the hardest thing that we have to face is loving ourselves. So it's a great little reminder. I love that. Definitely. And I definitely, you know, and I'm uh, obviously, I really feel for you guys. You're in stage four lockdown and different parts of Australia and different, you know, different levels of quarantine and lockdown. So, yeah, always thinking about you guys and... and um, but are you, yeah. Natty? Are you? No, not really. I just thought it was a nice <laughs> thing to say. It was <laughs> Thinking about love. you guys while I'm out here just enjoying coconuts on the beach. You know? Uh, I'm joking. I'm sorry. I don't want to rub that in. No, but listen, listen, I'm really looking forward to coming, to coming home, coming back sure. and just... Um, making some music, connecting, collaborating. I look forward to jamming with you. And, so. you know. We've got to do it. But you know what, Natty? It's not time for you to go. We're just warming up. We're okay. about, who knows if you're up for this? I don't know because I don't know if you're really going to walk away like, wow, that were great questions. But it's only going to get better from here. <laughs> now it's time for... <laughs> The mission. Are you ready for the mission? Anything could happen. We're going international today. I only just tuned in. Natty is in Jamaica, so the phone or the device she's on could cut out. But in this mission, I ask that you show us something from your fridge. You have a sacred item you can share with us and tell us the story. Sure. All right. The most favorite item within the space that you are in. And a piece of clothing that has the best memory attached to it. Wow. Just Is this small possible? Mission. It's just Far a small up. mission. And you have to go wow. now and take it to the journey. Let's get it. Where are oh, Let's go to the fridge. Actually, let's go to a stack right here. But let me see about clothing now with memory. Hmm. Let me see what we got. All right, that'll do. We'll have a skirt. Let's talk about the best or favorite item. We can do this. No, actually, we're going to do that. We can do this. There's a clue. Um, let me put that there. And then the fridge. I'm more than happy to talk about food and nutrition and health. Trust me. I'm doing a Get Growing campaign right now. Oh, okay. right. oh, what is it? Hemp hearts. What is that? So like oh. hemp seeds? Yes. Yeah. So hemp thought, seeds. You know what? I'm going down. I'm going down the plant-based route a little bit. I've got to say there's some amazing alternatives out there right now um, that aren't all gunked up with preservatives and whatnot that are quite healthy for you. They're great. All right. There really is. It's very now more than ever in the history of being a plant-based person, a healthy plant-based person, because it's very easy to be an unhealthy vegan. Yes. Very, very easy. So what you want to do is just, you know, focus on, on, like you said, things that aren't overly processed, things without too many additives. Sugar is like, sugar is the worst thing for human beings. It really matches with our brains. It's um, super addictive, super destructive. Um, if you can go sugar and you can go sugar free easily enough, things like date syrup, dates, okay. you can use agave as well. Um, it's still quite processed, but you know, you just have to shift your palate because health, listen, we're talking about health and wellness and consciousness shifting. I've been saying this a lot in the last week. Our diets are the quiet revolution because mm -hmm. you know, they say that our gut is like a second brain. Yes. And you're literally governed by the thoughts you have, right? So what you eat, 
it's very, very instrumental in how you feel and how you think and therefore how you act. So I'm 100% all about a shift in our diets, which I don't call diets. I call them when you're eating for, for life, for living, it's a live it, not a diet. Okay. Why are they calling it a diet? It's a yes. live it because mm. we're here to live and thrive. So oh, what wolf. you put in is going to fuel an engine that needs certain things. And guess what? More time, it's what people take out um, of what they eat that actually can help them more than what they're actually putting in because people eat more than they need and they eat um, products that just end up being clogging up the arteries and, and, mm -hmm. and the colon. So listen, one thing I want to tell you about this, hemp seeds, I use these predominantly to make my own milk. I make oh, milk wow. with this. It takes literally 30 seconds. It's creamy. It's delicious. I literally put, okay, if I want it creamy, I'll put three tablespoons of hemp seeds, three dates, and spring water, a cup of spring water, put it in the Nutribullet, blend it, boom. You have milk for tea, wow. for cereal, for coffee, for anything you want. And it's like with a whole bag of hemp seeds, you can get a lot of milk out of that. And I love it. hemp seeds are full of omega threes and nines. Very, very good. And hemp is an, is, is an original plant too. It hasn't been um, messed with by man. It hasn't been, you know, genetically modified. So you can also use it on salads and in smoothies and anything like that. Okay. So what, what did you want to see next? The sacred item. Okay. Let's see it here. Ah, great. So this is my, all right, this is my throw around guitar that, that stays here in Jamaica. It's, um, yeah, it's a, it's a trusty, it's one that I can just throw in the back of the car and take down to the beach and not get too worried. You know what I mean? So yeah. I write a lot of songs on it though. I write a lot of songs on this guitar and, um, you know, everyone who comes around can play and jam on it. Um, I think for me as a guitarist, always gotta have, have something very close by to write. Sure. Yeah. Awesome. Next item was a favorite <laughs> thing. Which the guitar could be that as well. Oh. <laughs> it could double up unless you've got another thing there. I thought this was that one, sorry. Boom, no, um, it's perfect. Um, and the you best said, you said a piece of clothing. clothing. Yes. All right, so I'm going to show you. Okay, I'm going to show you this. This is a Mama Yashi skirt, right? Okay, what is that? Okay. It's just a nice oh, fabric. Okay. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's just very a long bright. skirt. And this is so funny. Like, why am I showing you clothes from my wardrobe? Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So. You see this brand? Yeah. It's Mama Yashi. Mama Yashi is a designer here in Jamaica and she makes the most colorful, bright, functional, stylish, and um, very wearable clothes. And over the, over the last year, um, become really good friends with her. And I've, I, was, I have been someone who's bought her stuff before I even knew her because you know, you can find her at some, she hasn't got, she's got an online store, but she also, you can only really find her sometimes at events and things like that. So, okay. um, you know, so when I met her in person and we just got along so well, I was just like, oh my God, I love her stuff even more because she's such a beautiful person and so yeah. just super creative. And I love meeting and, and connecting with creatives. And we're actually talking about a collaboration. So Natalie Rise, Mama Yashi, Something, something coming up in the future, we hope. Okay, okay, all right. Boom, we better hit us up, we're ready. But you know what, Natty? <laughs> I can't have you on here and not teach you a little bit of my language, all right? And you know what, I think that you're someone that's very switched on and you're gonna learn very quickly, so it's all good. This would be very short and sweet. First word, is guna. Guna. You, you're going to teach me the word guna. <laughs> yeah, you should. <laughs> so, I'm a, you know what it is, so we'll move on real quick. Wow. The, the, next, the next word is gilly. Which? 
Gilly. Gilly. Yeah. I don't know Gilly. What's Gilly? Gilly is we. Gunas Pu Gilly is we. Yama. Okay, now we've got the balance. That's what we have yep. to. You're all about balance. How could I not? Of Australian? course. I'm, I'm glad right. I know that now. It would be rude. So Yama is hello. <laughs> Yama, yeah. Yep. Uh, yeah. Banagay. Can you say Banagay? Banagay. Yep, that is like, you'll like this one because it can, you can put it in the context of running, like a run or flow to flow. So I think Banagay is a bit, I like that one. And last word is Maija. Maija. And Maija means free. Nice. Yes, nice. Maija. Very nice. Now, which, which, country, which language is that? That's Gamilaray, my language. Oh, nice. Now, the next part, I'm actually glad you got the guitar there because I feel like this could be the best one yet. Now, I want to teach you just the littlest bit of my song, Wallenbar. But then, if you're up for it, maybe you can just reggae it up. Sure. Do your own spin. So it goes like this, it goes, Wallamba Mari, Wallamba Ina. All right. You want me to sing that back or you want me to reggae it up? Can you sing it back first and then just remix it? I want to hear you do it. Well, I want to hear you do it again. <laughs> Go through. Okay, yeah, ready? Wallamba Mari, Wallamba Ina. Wallamba Mari, Wallamba Ina. Well, yeah. Yeah, this yeah. is going to be difficult because I only have. <laughs> oh, no, <laughs> sure you, you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, we'll have to save that for, for another right. time. We can but do how, it properly. how would you reggae it up, though, without guitar? Is it possible? Okay. Yeah, of course. Like, well, I'm, uh, mm -hmm. chicken, 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 chicken. Probably a fast chop. Chicken, 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 chicken. You sing, go. Chicken, chicken. Wallamba Mari Wallamba Yeah man, that can work. I love that it. That can work. See you All dancing right. already. <laughs> That's it. Maddie, we've come to the end. Thank you so much for taking some time out of your day slash night over there in Jamaica. Um, but before you go, there's one last part and it's where the floor is yours. It's just a little declaration and um, you can just put out some words of love, empowerment, whatever it is to the listeners out there. So the declaration is... And the floor is yours. So open up my heart, set my spirit free with love. One family, one people ever connected. Remember that one love is an action. It's what we do. It's what we say. It's not just something that we sing along to. So make sure in all your doings and all your sayings, you're treating yourself with kindness and you're talking and walking new realities of one love into existence within your community, within your country, within your nation, within the world. And just sending so much love forward to you wherever you are watching this from and really look forward to connecting with music in the very near future. Peace and love. Boom. Thanks so much for your time today, Natty. Before you go, I just want to end with this one quote that I read of yours. <laughs> Natalie is a bright light in the world with a vision that extends beyond the stage. Keep shining your light, Natty. Thanks so much for your time. Can't wait to catch up with you and everyone in the near future when this is all said and done. Take care. Stay safe. Bless. Take care. Bless. Well, there you have it, Natalie Rise. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Tambo Talk. Natalie is doing some incredible things and is definitely on a mission to spread light and love to the world. I hope wherever you are right now, at some point through our journey, you had at least a little smile on your face. Take care. Until next time, I'm Mitch Tambo. You've been watching Tambo Talk. Yenu and Gully. Brr.